Hey everyone, welcome back to more Let's Play Seduce Me! Whew! I would like to mention something real quick before we do anything. I have officially played MBN Seduce Me 2 The Demon War. I've beaten all of it, got all the routes, did everything. And wow! It was awesome! I really liked it! It was a it was really, really good! I was surprised, actually! I, in fact, I kind of think I like number two more than I like number one? Yeah, num it, it was a lot of fun. A, a lot of the routes were great. Everything was great. I do have a few complaints, but I will save that for... Should I decide to make an LP of Seduce Me 2? I would like to, but I'm not going to say I will, because you never know what could happen. But just know, I would like to. Unfortunately though, in order for me to even get remotely close to doing number two, I have to finish number one. And that means going through Fuckboy Sam's route. Yes, yes, I know. Fuckboy Sam. Woohoo. Not exactly too particularly happy, but eh. We had to do him eventually, so why not now? Let's see. Hold up on our usual state. That we always, always usually do. And that's when I saw them! Who could it be? Even though we've done this twice already and we're about to do it three times. But it's okay. Lying on the floor was a group of men. They all were all unconscious, but there was no explanations as to why they were there in the first place. I dropped my bags as I let the door close on its own behind me. Huh? Who the heck are these guys? Why are they here? What's going on? Did Grandpa leave a surprise gift for me or what? Some of them had open wounds. The blood was stinging the floor and the sun was intermingling with the air. I couldn't help but feel bad for them instinctively, but nevertheless I was shocked and a bit angry at the sudden intrusion. My mind suddenly went from caring and concern to confused and demanding answers. Who are you guys? No response. I'll call the police! Still nothing. None of them seemed to be awake to answer or respond to me. It seems surreal to have random strangers in the house I just moved into. But I wanted answers. Quickly. That was until... Yeep! Get away from me! Woman, you're going to let me kiss you. I couldn't believe it myself, but within a mere blink of an eye, one of the men went from lying on the floor to being right in front of my face. What was even more odd was the fact that I felt serene and calm about it. Slowly, a desire burned from my chest, telling me to accept his kiss, even when my mind vehemently refused. Uh, huh? C go ahead. Good. Mm. <laughs> no, darn it! I had, <laughs> I had stronger willpower that time, I swear. Damn it! Someday I will not laugh at that, I swear to God. It's not that funny. It's not that funny, I swear. As he kissed me, I could feel my body go weak. I didn't know why, but that kiss was draining me of my energy, and yet it was so good it made my heart sink. It was a strange and tingling feeling that danced over every nerve on my body. I could feel streams of intangible energy run up my body into my lips. It felt odd, but at the same time, it felt amazing. Sam, stop it. Help me. Mm -hmm. The person kissing me. Sam was his name? Glanced behind him. I said stop. Now. Listen to him, please! Mm. Fine. Ugh. Finally, he pulled back, and I was left stand standing there in a daze. Huh? W w what? I couldn't tell what was going on. My mind was completely enwrapped by the kiss of my thoughts that melted into the depths of my forgotten memories. Please forgive my brother. He's a bit reckless. At least I feel a hell of a lot better than you right now. Because you used your abilities on her. Sam, you're such a reckless brute. Taking advantage of a beautiful young woman like her. Shut that pretty boy mouth of yours before I rip it off your pretty boy face. Jeez, you guys. Can we not fight right now? Not all of us are in the best state. I guess you are right, Matthew. I agree. Hmm. 
However, as the men got up and started to chat freely, my thoughts began to reassemble and I remembered my confusion and anger once again. Only now, multiplied tenfold. What? Huh? Did you say something beautiful? And I exploded. What is going on? Why the hell are you in my house? Why are you all wounded? Why did you kiss me? Who are you guys? Ah! I couldn't help exploding, but after being taken advantage of and being left in a mush state, my words escaped without filter. I definitely scared the men around me, even the men who kissed me. <laughs> Wait a second. The guy who kissed me. Ouch! What's your problem? What's your problem? You can't just go around forcing people to kiss you like that. Are you some kind of pervert? Pervert? It was only a kiss! It might mean nothing to you, but it means a lot to me. What? Was it your first kiss? Mm. Ow! Hey! What was that for? I know first kisses, are, kisses aren't exactly amazing and full of sparkles or something out of a fairy tale, but I had, I had at least expected it to be more than just something forced. So it was your first kiss. Stop making such a big deal out of it. Are you asking to get punched again? Well, what do you want me to do? It's not like I can somehow take it back. Ooh, so tempting, but unfortunately, we need to bang the fuckboy, so we'll ask for an apology. You should at least apologize. That would suffice. As if to himself, he muttered something under his breath. Why do I always look like the bad guy? <sighs> Apologies aren't my forte. But I'll try my best. Mm hmm? Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Sorry about what? I'm sorry for kissing you like that. I went too far. He sighed and ran his fingers through his hair. I didn't mean for it to turn out that way. It's just... I act on impulse, okay? It's difficult to control myself and... Yeah. <sighs> what am I saying? It's okay. I get what you're trying to say. Thank you for the apology. Yeah, no problem. And of course, the green heart is Sam's heart, and that means he likes us. Unfortunately. <coughs> anyway, if you try to pull any funny business in the future, just a fair warning, I know Taekwondo. <laughs> yeah, tss, away, tss, away. <laughs> Loser. I think I've figured enough. Time to get back to the main issue. So, what exactly are all of you doing in my house? <sighs> Miss, please forgive us in our intrusion. We didn't know this abode belonged to anyone, nor did we have the time to take that into consideration. What, what do you mean? You just don't barge into people's homes. We wouldn't have had to if we weren't as wounded as we are currently. We just escaped from a deadly fight that could have ended our lives. Luckily for us, your home was near and the windows were unlocked, so we quickly came inside. The last time I remembered, there were laws preventing strangers from sipping on private property. Although, considering the severity of their wounds, it had to be serious. I guess that explains the wounds, but not why he kissed me. He had absolutely no right to do that. Well, lovely flustered lady, it's hard to explain, truly. We're not exactly normal. Not normal. What are you guys, demons or something? I asked almost jokingly, but the boy seemed to take my question differently. <sighs> <laughs> well, yeah, actually, something like that. Huh? <sighs> We're incubi, miss. Demons who consume and use sexual energy of humans to survive. Incubi, the fabled demons that existed to haunt humans and make them sex-crazed monsters, the mythical beings that could own, that look like anyone just to get into your pants, the imaginary monsters you only saw in movies or on TV. Hello? Did you hear him? Yes, I did, fuckboy. Shut up. We're telling the truth. Do you think she's still processing it? Yes, and she'll understand right about... Right. It was funny while it lasted, but it's time to cut the joke short. Incubuses don't exist. There was no way they existed. That would be practically impossible. Ahem. Incubi is the correct plural form. And yes, we do exist. Thank you, Grammar Nazi. Thank you. Prove it. 
Fuck me. Why would we ever say this? Well, I guess in, under the state, sure, I guess, but god damn it. As soon as the words left my mouth, I instantly regretted them, as you should. Very well. Eric, go ahead. <laughs> Very well. Hello, homeboy. We just finished your route, but it's all good. I'll come back to you someday, I swear. My sweet, you're so tempting with such non-belief. Let me ease your mind with a tender kiss. I promise, you'll enjoy every minute of it. And maybe, you'll even want more. Well, in our last row, I certainly wanted more. What? <laughs> Once again, I was lost in a pool of calm and serenity. Staring into Eric's eyes, I felt a wave of heat course through my chest and onto my face, painting my cheeks red in their wake. I couldn't help but nod and agree to his offer. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Willpower! I have the willpower not to laugh! <clears throat> With another kiss, my heart began to flutter once again in my chest, and my mind was set spinning in a heated passion-filled pleasure. Yet, I could feel my body drain of energy as he kissed me. Alright, that's enough. Aww. Very well. <laughs> I feel so much better. I bet you do. As he pulled away, I was left in a mental mush pull. I felt weak in the knees, despite my will demanding me to stand straight in front of the boys before me. The world around me began to spin as I tried to speak. Uh, I think I'm going to... Ah, where are our manners? I'm James, and these are my brothers. Sam, Eric, Matthew, and Damien. Miss, are you okay? Shit. She fainted. I couldn't believe it. Incubi? Real? It all spun around my head until I saw only black. Floating in the darkness, my mind kept replaying the scene over and over again, reminding my body of the touch of the Incubus's lips against mine. However, I began to feel the smooth silk around me and my eyelids unwillingly opened. Huh? Where... I woke to find myself in an unfamiliar place. Where was Mom? Dad? I was pretty sure this wasn't my room. Oh wait, I lived in my grandfather's house now. Of course it would be unfamiliar. I heard my eyes and surveyed my surroundings. I was still in the clothes that I arrived at the house in, but I was laying in a silk-covered bed. I remembered coming in the afternoon, so why was it night time already? Suppressing a yawn, I stretched my arms. Maybe I should order some food for delivery. I was feeling pretty hungry. I was about to sit up, but I suddenly realized I wasn't alone. You're awake. Huh? Ah! Since when was he standing there? And who the heck was he? I got in my bedroom. Did we? There's no way. Hmm. Eh, sorry, I was... I think I was just saying my thoughts out loud. <laughs> Why was I apologizing? To a stranger who only said two words since I woke up. Wait. It looked eerily familiar. Then it all came back to me. Incubus. He was an incubus. He and his brothers came here for refugee. And two of them kissed me. And then I fainted. And that's how things came to this. Oh. <sighs> he was leaning against the far wall looking at me. My heart began to race as I thought of the endless list of possibilities the situation brought me. I hated the thought of being under an incubus's power. Especially in a bedroom. Jump and protect yourself. You ain't getting me this time. Hoo I instantly jumped up and grabbed a pill, covering myself with it. I felt stupid, yes, but who knew what this guy could do? Do your worst. This time, I'm prepared. <laughs> Oops, cut that short. Sorry. He didn't move. I guess that he wasn't going to attack me? <laughs> Sorry. One thing still concerned me, though. I'm not going to use my powers on you. Huh? How- I can read minds. It's an ability I was born with. Each of us has a different ability, outside of our usual mind-altering powers. Great. Even more surprises. I grew even more worried about the situation I was in. I see. How long have I been asleep? For a few hours. <laughs> it's already gotten quite dark outside. Oh, well. Where are the others? My brothers are downstairs. Cleaning up the blood from the lobby floor. 
<laughs> and making you dinner as an apology. Oh, okay. That's unexpectedly sweet. Oh, it's the least we can do after invading your home and two of us using our powers on you. Mm, you've got a point. Right, I had forgotten about that. It still irked me that they had practically taken advantage of me at that point. Even though we... Well, Sam, there's no excuse, but Eric, we kind of asked him to fucking prove it. Seriously. <clears throat> Even if they were demons, it was pretty rude to demonstrate their powers by kissing me. I wasn't some kind of human plaything. Well, for fuck's sake, what are you hoping to do? Get fucked to the vagina? Jesus. All this seemed pretty unreal. It was like something out of those romance novels that Naomi sometimes read. I wish I could... I wish I could have just went back to sleep and forgotten all about this. Maybe I should have just called the police on them. Then I would never have landed myself in this situation. Uh, do you feel well enough to get out of bed? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Trust me, I won't let you go. Aw, how sweet. Aw, uh, I'm not so sure about this. I promise. Uh, okay, I trust you. Even though I just met you, I'm a very trusty person, okay? And even though I tried to sort of attack you earlier. It's all good, right? Good. Alright, I'm assuming that's good. We're all good. Gucci good. Good. I was speechless. He was carrying me as if I weighed nothing. He was so strong. Thank you. Eh? Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> it's alright. I'm used to it. I decided to close my mouth for the time being so that I wouldn't weird him out or make things more awkward than they already were. Well, he didn't seem to mind carrying me or listening to me talk, so at least things weren't too strange. Demon seemed very quiet and calm about everything, especially with the situation we were in. However, there was a sort of longing in his eyes when he looked at me that wasn't lustful. It was more in... admiration? Once we reached the lobby, I decided that I felt well enough to walk on my own. As strong as he was, it was like he was carrying nothing. I didn't want to make him carry me everywhere. Yeah, that would be mortifying. Thanks for carrying me, but I think I can walk by myself now. That's not that, no, 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 not saying that I didn't like it. I mean, I liked it. Not in a weird, weird, weird way, of course. It's not like I get carried around all the time. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, it was really nice of you to do that. I started to fumble over my words again. Real smooth. It's no problem. I'll be heading to the dining room then. All right, see you. He gently lowered me to the ground before walk before he walked off quietly, disappearing into the shadows of the dark lobby. Oh, hi. Suddenly, a boy who looked around my age or possibly younger bounced up to me. He looked vaguely familiar. Oh wait. Uh, you're Matthew, right? Mhm, mm that's me. Are you feeling any better now? We were all worried when you suddenly passed out. I'm fine. Really? Your face is kind of red. Do you feel sick? No, no, no. I'm fine. I'm sure of it. I must have been blushing when Damien was carrying me downstairs. How embarrassing. Well, if you say so. I hope Sam and Eric didn't make you upset. It's okay. After all, I did hit Sam for what he did, and about Eric. I just wanted you guys to prove to me what you were saying. I suppose Incubi are... real, then. I wondered how exactly I got myself into this mess. First my grandfather, then a fight with my father, blowing up at Lizette, and now this? I certainly had a knack for getting myself into sticky situations. Hmm. Oh, I have an idea! He shoved his hands into his pockets with a cheery grin on his face. Wait for it. Wait for it. Is he trying to do a magic trick? Ta-da! Aww. Um, what is that exactly? He smiled as if to wave it off, but when he opened his eyes and saw what he was holding, his face froze in shock. Wait a second. What did I just make? This... What he produced from his pocket was a creepy looking doll with a freaking knife, and it's awesome. Ah, oh, what is that? I'm not sure. You produced it, man. <laughs> I love that app. Laugh, it's so evil! It's so cute at the same time. His face peeled consider considerably, and he dropped it to the floor, skidding away from it frantically. Get it away from me! You might be possessed by a demon or something! Uh, 
but is it he a demon himself? <laughs> oh, look at his face. His face is so cute. Oh, but he's so sad. He's like, yeah. That's not what I wanted to make. I just wanted to surprise you with a stuffed animal or just something to cheer you up. That looks like it came straight out of a horror movie. He slumped his shoulders and looked down at his feet. Aw, it's okay. You don't have to look so dejected. I mean, it's certainly unique. You can have it, because uniqueness... You guys are unique. You guys are special, so you can have it. What? I appreciate the thought, but, uh, no thanks. That's too bad. Are you sure? I picked up the doll and waved it around him. It was funny teasing him. Gah! Help! It's gonna kill me! <laughs> alright, alright. I'll stop. Uh Anyway, I'm heading back to help out with the food. You can come over if you're hungry. Hmm, I think I'll go with you then. Hmm. Something smells good. My stomach rumbled in agreement. I was starving. Oh, the girl's awake. Excuse you? I have a name, you know. Should we really care? I don't know, you're in your host's house, eating. I think it would be nice to know the host's name. Maybe. Just maybe. Fucking Sam, host. I will roast that tongue for dinner if it doesn't stop flapping in that idiotic mouth of yours. Shh. Whatever. I apologize for his attitude. Oh. That's fine. <laughs> Good. I hope you'll enjoy the meal we prepared for you. Meal? For a second, my mind didn't understand what James meant. Maybe it was the doll getting into my head and distracting me. Oh, that's right! Do you mean to Matthew mentioned that they were making dinner as an apology? You know, Mika's kind of a scatterbrain, to be perfectly honest. She just keeps, like, thinks of it two seconds, and then two seconds later she forgets about it completely. It's kind of a scatterbrain. Oh, wait! You didn't have to! We insist. Besides... It's quite impossible to undo our cooking, even if you command us to. All right. Well, thank you. Matthew put down the last of the plates on the table and bowed a bit exaggeratedly to me, gesturing to the table with a sweeping motion. Ha! Ah, there we go. Dinner's all served. The table was filled with various foods from a... a electric selection of cuisines. One portion of the table was filled with elegantly plated Asian foods, and another portion some yummy looking desserts. And there were yet more and more plates I could have possibly imagined. Whoa! That's a lot of food! And it all looks so good! Yeah, there should be a lot of food because, you know, men eat like a shit ton of food, generally, so. We hope you enjoy it, my sweet. Huh? So sweet? Me? That's enough, Eric. <laughs> You're no fun, James. I don't need to be fun, Eric. Miss, please follow me. I didn't know what came over me, whether it was his politeness or maybe his power, but I couldn't help but take his offered arm. James seemed very kind and intelligent, but aside from that, there was something that set him apart from his brothers. Not to mention, he didn't really seem to hold much appreciation for them. Miss, I have to ask. Why do you live alone? Oh, well, it's kind of a long story. I'm all ears if you wish to tell. And, as before, uh, just for time's sake, uh, we'll say no. I mean, for James' route, we say yes, but... Eh. It's fine. Maybe another time. Very well. Here's your seat, then. Let me get your chair for you, lovely lady. Oh, uh... Eric was very charming, and his smile pulled on my heart. The way he kept flirting with me definitely designated him as the charm of the demons. Yet, there was a little distance in his eyes. By the way, I apologize for my behavior earlier. Stealing your second kiss like that. Huh? Oh yeah, when I didn't believe that they were incubi. Again, we're so fucking scatterbrained, really. Come on now. It's fine, I guess. I mean, you didn't just get up and grab a kiss for no reason, unlike some people I could mention. I'm not as forward, unlike Sam. <laughs> Suddenly, Eric leaned in and whispered in my ear. I won't lie, though. I enjoyed kissing you and feeling you melt in my arms. I was torn between smacking him and trying to play it cool. And goddamn, we are never, ever, ever smacking him, because fuck that option. We're gonna play cool. 
because we're cool like that. You sure are quite the charmer. Yes, I am known for that. As much as I do appreciate the constant compliments, you don't have to keep talking to me like that. Like what? He batted his eyelids as if he had no idea what I was talking about, and I couldn't help but laugh. Like, well, like you're trying to get into my pants half the time. I can assure you, I'm just a lover of beautiful women. Uh-huh. Something tells me that there's more to it than that. For a moment, he looked away, losing a bit of a smile before I could question it, though. He turned back to me with a new teasing smile. Did you want there to be more? God damn it, oh boy. I didn't want him- I didn't want to hit him, but I didn't know how to react, so I couldn't look at him. He merely chuckled again in my ear. <laughs> Sorry. You just look so cute when you're blushing. Damn it, oh boy, stop it! This is Sam's route, not your route! God damn it! I felt my face heat up so simply from his words. I then felt Eric take my hand and kiss it gently. I hope you'll enjoy dinner, however, my dear. I drew my attention back to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared by the amount of food they made. Seeing my expression, Eric leaned forward and proudly smiled, gesturing to all the dishes with a dramatic sweep of his arm. I made almost all of the dishes myself. Humorously enough, Matthew looked at him with a shocked expression as if he was betrayed. His face changed instantly to that of a frown. And I'm the Queen of the Nile! What's that supposed to mean? Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. It's you, James, and I, Matthew. Thank you, Grammar Nazi. Thank you. <laughs> Little boys will always make mistakes. Aw, come on. Don't be so hard on Matthew. He's just a baby. The baby boy of the group. Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably for siding with Eric, and he annoyedly swiveled back to Eric to confront him. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Well, you certainly don't act like it. <laughs> I couldn't help. I really couldn't help but laugh. Matthew seemed very much like a kid. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel like, in a way, he was much more mature than the others, especially Eric. Huh? Is something funny? <laughs> no, no, it's nothing at all. Thank you for the mill. All of you. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome, miss. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and out. Eric, knock it off! In agreement with Matthew, Sam cocked up his head and glared at Eric. Seriously. You're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group. God damn, no shit! He had this big, tough act, and it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. But was there more to him than that? I'm just trying to be a gentleman. The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. Oh, homeboy. He... Oh, homeboy. 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 There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. I don't know. I don't mind it. No, 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 don't, don't, don't. We're, we're here for Sam. We're here for Sam, not Eric. We're here for Sam. Sam. <sighs> I miss Eric. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're gonna need some cold water for that burn. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I don't believe we caught your name even though you know each of us. Uh, I'm Mika. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Yeah, that's a nice name. They were all comfortable around me, despite the awkward situation we were in. It was as if we were natural for them to be around humans. I guess that was just how Incubi worked. But I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me? James, what the hell's wrong with your eyes? All at once, they looked at me. I didn't know why, but having all of them looked at me f made me feel kind of important. Like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still want to know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah, like being told that a bunch of you by randomly appearing in your house was perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? Uh, I don't know, the fucking details, asshole. Now you're just being rude, Sam. 
I'm just saying. How was that difficult to understand? No, I mean what specifically happened. Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of... misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. It's fine, I guess. So, you're all better now, right? Yup, all thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. But we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power, it was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. These incubi intrigued me, but at the same time, I could almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do you all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we gonna do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here, and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take them, easily. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't po possibly survive out there. If they didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes, they probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They probably would cause chaos all over town. Or, on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be poked and prodded like lab frogs for research. That was even worse. But most of all, they reminded me of... back then... I was standing alone. The entire classroom was, was filled with laughter and chatter, but I stood in the midst of it, quiet and alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such vibrancy, all while I stood there. On the plus side, I wasn't engaged in any of the drama that might have arisen, like scribbling on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It was kind of nice just sitting back and watching things pass by and life go on. I had long before convinced myself that I preferred being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, Yeah, I want to be alone. There's no one like I like better than me, so I ought to spend more time with myself. But there was a certain bitterness that, coupled with being alone, made me feel sad. There was a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize that at that moment. Even after that moment, my father, my mother, there was no one to turn to. I was so lonely. That's when I decided to decided on it right then. I was going to see my grandfather. I didn't care if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk my way over there and see what he had to say about it. I had never met, seen, <clears throat> I had never seen nor met him before that. What better time to see him then? If no one else was going to help me with that? Jesus, I can read right now. Jeez. If no one else was going to help me with what I was feeling, I might as well have turned to him. So after school, I decided to walk there. I had no idea how to get there, and I was armed with only a scrap of paper with the address scribbled on it. As a seven-year-old, I obviously had great ideas. Eh, as you do. I soon became lost, and like I always did when I felt lost, I just stood there on the sidewalk, back pressed up against the wall, and eyes looking at the strangers passing by. And like always, people continued to pass by, and life continued to go on. I was sadder than ever. I'd ended up in the situation I was originally in. Nothing had changed. I thought that I was silly for even thinking I could change things in my own hands. That was until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that you? I looked up and saw an unfamiliar face, but it was obvious that whoever was talking to me knew who I was. And from that moment, things began to change. Life began moving its rusty joints, and I realized that things were moving along. Suddenly, I became part of the crowd that moved like a blur past me. I was no longer someone who stood still and watched others hurry past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because the very person who found me that day was my grandfather. I had the opportunity to help them. Though, would I? I wanted to, but I wasn't sure if that was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house wasn't exactly the living arrangement that I had imagined when I first moved in. 
There was the matter of making sure no one found out about their powers. Thinking about them as lab rats made my stomach queasy. And even if they passed for humans, how would I explain having guys living in my house? Imagine my friends came over. They would probably think I was a part of a harem or something. God damn. I think that would be awesome, but... Yeah, that's just me. <clears throat> oh god, imagine if my parents came over. I think my mom would faint. Who knows what my dad would do. I think he would have them arrested on the spot. Ugh, this is hard. Maybe I should have written out a prongs and cons list before actually having to make a decision. Don't, Don't worry, worry too, too much about it. About you have you plenty of time to decide. to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. It was strange that I happened to remember what my grandfather said to me when I was little. But it did kind of make sense. They weren't in the same exact situation that I was in before, but I did want to help them out. I think it would ease my conscience and also make me a bit happy to give them help. As weird as that sounded. Clenching my hands into fists, I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, um, you could. What was that, lovely lady? That is, a. Uh... Spit it out already. I hate you. You could stay with me here if you'd like. As soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads for my words. The silence in the air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you all needed a place to stay and, well, I just moved into this giant house. So it would seem like it made sense. It was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. If you would like to stay here, though, there are two things I need all of you to follow. Yes? First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, save for enemies, but... You got the drift. That sounds reasonable. Second, you have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so... yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. What? Are you serious? Hey Sam, there's a door to the outside world. Feel free to walk through it if you hate this fucking idea. Shh, be quiet Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> you all seemed to like the idea, except for Sam. And hey, I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were incubi. It would be interesting having five guys help me with taking care of the house, given they would follow the rules I had just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever! Only until we can beat up that group of punks! I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes! This is awesome! Also beautiful, if you need a bedfellow... <laughs> Eric, please, don't, don't tempt me, please. Oh, I'm going through the fuckboy route. I can't go through the homeboy route. Ah, uh, don't tempt me! Um... Eric, knock it off. I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed help and my want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Finally, I'm starving! Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James's eyes switching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs! Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. So, I did it! <laughs> I couldn't hold in my laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way, faces stuffed. Is something funny? Oh god, you're so cute. What are you laughing at? You're not so cute, shut up. I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. You both are so funny. Both of their faces turned up slight pink before they looked away from me, and they swallowed the food in their mouths. Shut up! We're not funny! We're hungry! Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. Shut up, Matthew! What? I'm just saying. 
<laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. <laughs> they were funny to me. At least they enjoyed the food. As I watched, I took a couple of pieces of food for myself and placed them on my plate before eating as well. <clears throat> Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like a part of their family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon disturbed. Huh? It's my mom! Uh, excuse me! Hello? Hey, honey, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Hi, Mom. Everything's fine. I'm actually eating dinner right now. Oh, good, good. So there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night to celebrate the new house and all. A house party? Tomorrow night? So soon? Your father insists. You know how he is with events. I knew exactly what she meant. He didn't like long, relaxing periods between important events. It was slightly messed up, because he's a fucking asshole. What, what do we expect? I was expected to act on the drop of a dime for moving immediately, immediately the day after a funeral to my father's house, grandfather's house to now organizing a party. <clears throat> I know. Well, since I don't exactly have you, to hear, you two here to help me arrange it, I'm going to need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, Suzu and Naomi can help. I have work, and you know how your father is. Yeah, our father's an asshole. I know. I have to do it myself. He won't help. I'm sure it'll be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. Gee, thanks, Mom, for not fucking helping and dropping this on a fucking dime. Our parents are horrible. Our parents are horrible. Why do we have them? Thanks, Mom. Alright, I gotta go. I love you, sweetie. I love you too, Mom. Not really, but whatever. Great, now how am I going to do this? Is something wrong? She has to organize a house party for her parents. Huh? How do you- Alright. Mind reading. <laughs> but yeah, I gotta do it soon or my parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up and organize everything tonight. Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. Fuck boy, please, just fuck off. Sam? Back off! Uh, we'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That was surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer help right off the bat. I couldn't help but smile. I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. Now I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, princess? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. At least tomorrow's the weekend so I can sleep in. Then it hit me. Wait! Where are you all going to sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Phew. Oh, got it. Alright then. I'm heading to my room to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow? Have a good night. I will! You too! With that, I left the dining room and went to my room. Eric, no. What? I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, he was. <laughs> oh. Oh. Homeboy. Homeboy, please. Please. Stop. Please. You're making this really, really hard. <laughs> as soon as I got into my room, a wave of exhaustion hit me. Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I just woke up from that nap. I dragged myself to my bed and hauled up one of my bags. I opened it and grabbed my economics book, knowing that, no matter how tired I was, I had to study at least a page or two before sleeping at last. The words on the page scrambled in my mind as I read through them, but after two or three tries, I managed to understand what the page was about. <laughs> Equations. Yay! Finally, I decided to change to my pajamas and head to bed. Today had been a long day and I needed to rest. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Three days of surprises, three days of surprises in a row would just kill me. With that thought in mind, I drifted to sleep, embracing the darkness of slumber. <laughs> you fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? Well, save that to the end of my pistol! 
Huh? What's going on? I couldn't move my body. I felt like I was tied up. I couldn't see anything but beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yet, I could hear the sounds of heated argument coming from me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it! Let her go! Matthew? Come on, chicken shit. Fight us like a real man. <laughs> like you scare me, Sam. Come on. Take one step. I dare you. Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix. And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Suddenly, I felt myself pulled to one side and arms wrapped around my body protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. Huh? Eric? As I held in... As I was held in a tight embrace, I felt the world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before had faded into black as the arms around me rocked me comfortably. Slowly, though, my eyes fluttered open, and I looked up at the person holding me. D D damien I stared into the eyes of Damien. His face was painted with worry and concern, and I knew he must have seen my dream. Why did he dream of Eric holding me, though? You can't control your dreams. Uh, well... I guess you're right. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Mm, what time is it? It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well... You can't control your mind reading? No. Not yet, at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Is everything all right? Huh? Yeah, I'm all right. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yeah. I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Oh, thank you. Now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. It was embarrassing to be the damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me, despite only knowing me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it... If it was just courtesy, or if they were genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. All right. The two boys led me back to the dining room, where the smell of baking, bacon and eggs danced in the air. The smell wafted from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl in need. Breakfast smells good! Mm -mm -mm. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. Don't mind if I do. I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. That feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I felt a hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? Morning. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! There's no need to yell, Sam! You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! From behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me, rubbing his temples in obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and smirked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. Then wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Whatever you want, but you got owned, bitch. Soon, James and da Damien appeared, hands full of plates that carried bacon, eggs, and toast and waffles. They placed the, pl the plates down by each seat before seating themselves. Mmm, my favorite. Finally. Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. It's our pleasure. All of a sudden, my phone began to reach for me to pull it from my pocket and answer. And I'm really off tune, okay. Really off tune. Hey, Hello? good morning. Ah, oh, shit. Guess who's at your door right now? Ah, oh, shit. Right on cue, there was a knock from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were here? I'll get it. My heart quickly pounded my chest. Matthew was in the lobby, and he gets to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed to the dining room. Rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through the archway between the dining room and lobby, I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass door handle, causing the world to go in slow motion. Matthew, don't! 
but before my words could reach his ears, Matthew had opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. Uh, um... The world around me stopped as Suzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely had stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. Uh... <laughs> Hi? I cannot believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was already bad enough! To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, someone do something other than stand there! Who are you? S Suzu, let me explain! What's going on here? I said let me explain! Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh... Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Uh, they're visitors! Then why did one of them open the door? To be courteous, to, to be nice, because I was in the other room. Duh! Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, come on, come on, really? Really? Um, it was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then, I felt a hand on my shoulder, and I felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Suzu and Naomi, and sat across from their confused gazes. As Naomi and Suzu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! Thank you! Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Suzu's, Suzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their prompted meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? Well, you see, uh... Gently, James took m placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense! It's such a huge house! A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work, so she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Let's all go with this. This is a good plan. They're buying it, so it's all good. We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Shut up, Sam. Sam, not now. Well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. I'll stay and help around the house, cause if you want to be with any of the boys, you gotta do it. You gotta stay and help clean. Are you sure? I'm sure. 
Besides, it is my housewarming party. I should help out too. Want us to help out as well? I think we got it all taken care of. Thanks though, girls. All right, we'll head on out then so we're not in the way. Sorry guys, I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Thank you. I led them back to the lobby and walked into to the doors, opening it for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs before walking out to Naima's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them, just because they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work. The party was tonight, and we had to do all we could to make everything right. We sat down and talked about what needed to happen before the party started that night. Each guy was had been assigned a different part of the party to do, and right after lunch, we began to work. Since everything was taken care of by at least one incubus, James told me I could assist one of them. The question was, who? Gee, I wonder who we're choosing because we're going through his freaking route. Sam with the front yard. And with that, we're done with today's episode. We're going to save. Yes. Voila. And as I said, we're done with today with Sam. Yeah, we're done with freaking, freaking Sam. Can we go back to Eric? Can I just do Eric twice and say one of them was part of Sam's and we just kind of ignored it? Please? I really like Eric a lot. Ah. Uh, anyway, I am Terror the Fox. You are the viewer. And I hope to see you next time.